Kevin, how are we doing today? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Now I'm doing well. Um, do you get time off on the bye week, or are you? Is it just like 24 hours a day still for you? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We actually got last Friday off, and then um, got the uh, got the weekend off as well. So uh, I think Charlie Whitehurst, I want to say, was signed like Thursday afternoon, and that was right as I was kind of leaving the office, and that was really the last bit of news that uh, that that happened. So pretty much a nice 48, 72 hours yeah. off before now a seven week grind begins till the end. <laughs> Do you keep your fingers crossed that nothing will happen over that weekend? Like, please, I just I need the time. Give me a break here. <laughs> Yes, because it always seems like that there's something that happens during the bye week. Obviously, the Andrew Luck news yeah. this year. And then going back to Chuck Pagano's first year, that's when he was diagnosed oh, with yeah. leukemia was, was was during that very early bye week. You yeah. know, looking, looking back on it, that was a blessing for the Colts that they had their bye week. I think it was a week four bye week, the earliest of any team in the league. So, uh, And then this year, I think it was a week 10 bye week. So, uh, unfortunately, there's usually always news during the bye week There's but for the most something. part it was a quiet quiet weekend kevin bowen our guest colts.com featured writer let's start with andrew luck obviously it's only been what a week since we've heard the news that he's got the lacerated kidney and the partially torn ab where are we at as far as you know what's the team how the team is handling him is he trying anything or is it just rest and recuperation and take your time and and get back when you're ready yes i i think right now it's strictly rest no physical activity no you know conditioning sort of stuff for him it's you know try to be as much of a mental help as you can be i think at monday's practice he wasn't even out there uh you know going through pre-practice drills or anything like that with the with the quarterbacks and you know his role is kind of helping charlie whitehurst try to be a sponge for that hasselbeck as well as the colts i think integrate a new offense which is something that i feel like it is kind of an under the radar storyline it's You know, with that Denver game, it was such a makeshift. It was, okay, kind of go on the fly with just a very vanilla offense. Now it's, okay, Rod Sadinsky has a full week as an offensive coordinator. During the bye week, from an offensive staff standpoint, they can now put something together for what their identity is going to look like um, for the next, you know, really for the rest of the season. So I think that is kind of where Andrew Luck is helping this team right now. And, uh, Eventually down the road, I think that's when he'll get back on the field and do more physical stuff. Are they still looking at this two- to six-week timetable, or has there been any indication of a more specified amount of time as to when he may make his way back? I mean, nothing from a concrete standpoint. I think kind of the kind of the biggest thing with this injury is just it, it, you can't play on a bum kidney. You know, you can, you can play on a bum ankle. You can gut it out through, you know, Andrew Luck has obviously played through some injuries this season, but... You know, kidneys just not just not something that you can go out there and play at eighty percent, if you will. So I think that is kind of the hardest thing to specify. And there's not really rehab for this sort of injury. You know, you have these world class doctors, and unfortunately, they they just can't give you you know the same type of help that I think you could for a normal injury. So I think that's where the greatest unknown is in that timetable because you rarely see you know two to six weeks. You know, usually it's like okay, you know a high ankle sprain, you're out three to four weeks or something along those lines, you rarely see this sort of range in the time frame. So, uh, unfortunately, there's been no real update on that as now we're a week into it. Do you know how, yeah, it's not like you can just tape up a kidney and jump back in there. So, no, uh, no, not at all. How, do you know how often is he being, is this a daily checkup by the doctors? Are they having scans run on a, a regular, are they just going to give it some time and then go back in here in a week or so and scan it and see how it's healing? What's the, do you, how much information do you have in regards to that? Yeah, I think he's getting checked up every day. And, and I think it's one of those things where it's Andrew telling the doctors how he feels. Because, again, a lot of it is an unknown from the doctor's standpoint. Um, and then it's the doctor saying, okay, you know, we can take the next step. And whether that is, you know, getting them on the field for, you know, pre-practice drills or, you know, throwing it in a stationary motion or whatever the next step is, um, I think that'll be kind of the, the biggest thing for him to see. Okay, once you get, this, get through the Atlanta week now, it's can you take that next step? Does he get out on the field at all? Because I think there's going to be multiple steps in this process before you just throw him out there on the field because it is such a serious injury. Well, it's Kevin Bowen from Colts.com joining us on the Menard Studio Hotline. Ford O'Brien, ESPN Evansville, 105.3 and online, ESPNEvansville.com. I know Chuck Pagano had made comments. I saw it uh, on your Twitter account uh, yesterday. I know he has his, his weekly Monday session with local media uh, in the Indianapolis area and was very 
blunt, I would say, uh, in, in how he dealt uh, or how he was answering questions about Luck and saying things like he can't run like a linebacker anymore. Um, how much do you think Luck will take that to heart when he does get the opportunity? Are we going to see more slides out of Andrew Luck, or is instinct going to kick in and we might see more of those, I'm just going to run, and if somebody hits me, I'll just take it? <laughs> right, right. I think that's one of the greatest unknowns because he does play the game with the linebacker's mentality, and that's part of the reasons why he's been you know, so successful here early in his career. You know, The, the play that I always go – Go back to it that uh, is against the Bengals last year in the playoffs when you know he had Carlos Dunlop kind of draped all over him and it probably should have been a sack and he just throws that frozen rope to Dante Moncrief mm-hmm. for a, for a huge touchdown. I think it was a 13-10 um, score at that point of the game and and he keeps that play alive and you're able to score that touchdown and then ultimately make it to the AFC Championship game a couple weeks later. So I think. He's got to pick his spots. I think that's the biggest thing. And, and when you are sliding, and, and, and when you are in the open field, and if it's not a third and ten, you got to get to this X yard line to extend that drive. That's when you got to take your medicine, and that's when sometimes you know maybe taking a sack or maybe throwing the ball away is the best avenue for him. And, and it, it's going to be hard to drill in him because he's so darn competitive. He wants to keep so many plays alive. And that's, I think, going to be the hardest thing for him is where do the instincts fall into it? Um, I think this injury it definitely has to be an eye-opener to him that, okay, I cannot keep on playing the game. You know, reckless isn't the right word, but just playing it with that same, you know, linebacker mentality. So I think that's going to be something that's going to be very difficult for him to judge. Okay, when do I take my chances and when do I realize, you know, maybe holding back from getting another two yards is in the best interest of not only my own health but this team. Well, we know it's Matt Hasselbeck's show for the uh, foreseeable future until Luck can get back onto the field. Uh, how is he preparing? Uh, I assume we know we've seen him out of you know two games that he wins, and one of which, as we find out after the fact, and you and I have talked about it in the past, that he was literally, as Coach Pagano put it, on his deathbed just dealing with the flu right. or, or whatever it was. But now you know, you've know you got ideally a healthy Hasselbeck. Um, two games is, is one thing to be able to, to hold, hold a place uh, while your quarterback gets right again. Uh, your starter comes back in. Matt Hasselback, 40 years old. You're looking at a guy that may be playing three, four, maybe five games. Can he sustain, uh, you know, is, is he healthy enough to be able to do that? Or are we going to find ourselves in a situation where, you know, like Peyton Manning these days, uh, dealing with yeah. a, a rash of injuries? Are they going to tweak things offensively for Hasselback to try to keep him more protected or maybe some shorter throws? Is it going to be a lot of the same game plan we saw against the Texans and the Jaguars a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I've yeah, I think you're definitely on to, on to something there. And Matt had a great quote yesterday when he talked to the media. You know, I know my own limitations is kind of what he was saying. You know, he's not going to make those plays. He doesn't have the athletic ability to make the plays that Andrew has been making with his feet and keeping plays alive and scrambling uh, for first downs on third down and whatnot. And Matt knows his strength. And one of his strengths, like you said, is getting the ball out very quick. I looked it up earlier today. Pro Football Focus has all these analytic numbers, and, and I think Hasselbeck gets the ball out of like 2.2 seconds, which is the fifth fastest of any quarterback that's taken a snap this year in the NFL. So he realizes that he, his mobility isn't going to win the Colts games. It's, okay, get the ball out quick, find your playmakers, rely on Frank Gore, and try to move the ball from that standpoint. And that's exactly what the Colts did against Houston. Houston especially, I think that's when Gore had, I think, 98 yards in that game down there on that Thursday night. So I think you've got to get a heavy dose out of Frank Gore. And then I think Rob Chazinski, again, like I talked about earlier, how he has now had a week to prepare this new offense, the one advantage that Chud now has versus what Pep Hamilton didn't really have earlier in the year is he now knows that Matt Hasselbeck is going to be his starter, at least for right now. So he can tailor game plans to specifically Matt, Whereas earlier in the year, Andrew Luck, it was kind of an unknown if he was going to start or not until very late in the week against Jacksonville and Houston. So I think from that standpoint, you can have specific plays, specific types of you know tempo or rhythm that you want to get into that is going to be tailored specifically to Matt. So I think that is an advantage that you didn't have for Jacksonville and Houston that you will now have for Atlanta and potentially longer. Kevin Bowen, Colts.com featured writer, our guest. It's Ford O'Brien, ESPN Evansville, 105.3 online, ESPNEvansville.com. Real quick, uh, Kevin, let's jump to the defensive side of the things. Uh, we know that Henry Anderson's out for the season. Big loss there. How's What's the latest on Mike Adams and his status? 
Yeah, Mike did not practice on Monday. He was an observer at, at practice. No official injury report. Again, the Colts practice Monday because they're coming off the bye week. Most teams don't practice on Monday. So uh, we'll get the first injury report tomorrow. I think that's the biggest individual injury to watch. You know, Andrew Luck pretty much has been ruled out. Like you said, Henry Anderson on injured reserve. So I think the biggest question mark going into Atlanta is going to be Mike Adams. And, of course, that impacts things a ton because when you think about Atlanta, you think about Julio Jones just putting up, you know, frankly, historic numbers through the first nine games of the season. So how does that impact maybe Avante Davis' shadow role? Do you feel comfortable with, you know, potentially without Adams and then Avante Davis shadowing Julio Jones as well? How does that kind of, you know, What's a trickle down effect with Greg Toller and Dwight Lowry mm-hmm. and Darius Butler? So I think that's going to be something to watch this week because if healthy, I think Adams will obviously be out there, and then that allows you, I think, to deploy Vontae Davis in that shadow role for for really the first time since Sammy Watkins earlier on in the season. Real quick, one last thing: uh, Will we see third round pick uh, Dejon Smith on the field this weekend? He is now on the active roster. Um, I, I, it would not shock me if they kind of brought him along a little slower um, because he just doesn't have a ton of NFL experience. You know, he, he's missed all of the regular season up to this point. He was dealing with a knee injury in the preseason, um, so doesn't have a ton of reps. So I think maybe you place him on special teams a little bit and the occasional defensive rep here or there early on in his comeback, and then maybe down the road, when you play, you know, the Steelers and Antonio Brown or Houston and DeAndre Hopkins, I mean, you're going to be playing some very good wideouts here in the second half of the season. So it would not shock me if he was a little bit limited this week and then maybe played a little bit more uh, the rest of November and into December as well. Always good stuff, Kevin. Appreciate the time. Kevin Bowen, Colts.com featured writer. Find him on Twitter at KBowenColts. We'll talk again next Tuesday, Kevin. Sounds good, guys. Have a good one. All right, take care. Thank you.